Hello and thank you for joining me for another Distress Oxide colour combination video. Today we're looking at Dusty Concord, so a beautiful, I'd say a purple earring on the side of uh, grey um, because it's just sort of quite a muted purple. I'll combine these or, or compare these to some other purples in a moment. Um, but Dusty Concord, as always, is available in um, the Oxide, the Ink, the Stains, all of the different sprays and everything within the Distress Oxide range. So let's first blend this colour on its own. If you're just joining me for the first time, welcome, thank you so much. Um, you can find more of the Distress Oxide colour combination videos by checking out the entire playlist. We're getting towards 20 videos now, but I'm going to be working my way through everything alphabetically, so you'll be able to see them all there. So that is how Dusty Concord goes on to white cardstock. And you see what I mean about it having a slight grey tone. I think it's quite a muted, it's lovely, but it's quite a muted purple. Now, what I have done for you, and this is by request, and I know lots of you are enjoying seeing this, is some of the other similar shades in the range and how they compare. Now, this Dusty Concord is very much a colour in its own right. There's nothing else that really compares to it. I've pulled out some purples that I have um, that I would say kind of sit around it. Milled Lavender, Seedless Preserves, Wilted Violet and Villain... I always say Villainous. Villainous? Villainous Potion? Let me know. Um, so I've got the four different colours there. Now, Milled Lavender looks like it's miles off, but actually, when you look at the pads, they're not all that different okay um i like to show you that because as you can see sometimes the labels and the actual ink pads don't look the same so it depends whether you compare the labels or the ink and then again when you blend they can look completely different to both as well so this is our dusty concord and these are our four colors that we've got here so as you can see uh, as you'd expect milled lavender is much much paler almost um, almost a pink tone there and again in pink you've kind of got the seedless preserve sitting there now again I think it sits within the purple family but definitely more towards the pink the closest one would definitely be a wilted violet much brighter much um, more of a vibrant purple this one uh, perhaps a bit more blue as well certainly less of the gray tone you can see here sort of mauve tone and then you've got the Villainous Potion, which is extremely dark, a deep, deep purple. But again, if you put the two together like this, you'd probably think there wasn't actually that much difference, particularly between those three, which is those three. OK, so it's well worth doing your swatches when you first get a colour to get to know what it's actually like on paper. So I don't think that um, Dusty Concord really sits too closely with anything. So it is definitely a colour on its own that we're going to be able to use and not worry about it when we're blending, not worry about another colour sort of sitting too closely to it and looking the same. So let's start with our first colour blend. As many of you will know, if you've joined me before, I like to do a three colour and a four colour combination for you using this particular sort of the focus colour. Now for this I'm going to use Aged Mahogany and Fire Bricks. I'm going to go into the reds. Aged Mahogany is almost a purple. It's, a, it's kind of a burgundy so it definitely sits nicely between purple and red. So I've chosen to go for this one next. So put this down. Look how gorgeously deep this colour is. Age Mahogany does already have its own video up on the playlist so you can catch that out, catch that out, check that out <laughs> over there and I'm just going to bring in with what's left on my brush from Dusty Concord and blend those two together. Now if I cover that over isn't that just beautiful? You can kind of go into a brown with either of these as well because they've got that Kind of a uh, grey tone to them, the muted, almost neutral tone to them. So you can go down into a brown, into a grey with these, certainly into black soot for a nice deep dark colour. But let's brighten this up just a little. I'm just going to remove the excess off my mat and the blending mats, the clear blending mats that I'm using come in A4 and a 6x6 six six in a pack. These are from Craft Stash as are most of my brushes and if you're interested in things like the labels that I've got so I've got the I've got black labels I think I've got black labels white labels for all of the names and I've also got the colored labels which are 
uh, similar colours. They're not uh, exact, but they're similar colours for your ink pads and your brushes or your storage, whatever it may be. They're all free. They are all free to download. Um, but you'll find the link for everything that I'm using, each individual link, down below in the description. So now we're going to go into our bright red. So this is fired brick and it's a beautiful red which could actually then easily lead into an orange as well if you wanted to if you wanted to go from the cools into the lights this is a nice way to do so so just bringing that up to the aged mahogany and then pull that away from the ink that i've got on my mat use the excess ink that i've got on my brush and go over that blend line there now three very juicy pads so i've got lots and lots of ink laid down there and isn't that lovely you can see see the shine on there on the particularly on the last two colors where i've still got wet patches in fact i feel like i need to do a little bit more on the aged mahogany so let's just take the excess off from there because i feel like i need a bit more color laid down there just here that's better much much better so i'm going to put that strip through the middle just touching the blend lines again remove the excess it looks sometimes like you're using an awful lot of ink but you're really not these ink pads just go on for a very very long time they're just blending out that line softening the the line between the two again oh much better there we go so again still wet as you can see the shine but isn't that going to be a beautiful color blend once that's all dried perfect for halloween for valentine's day as well it's just stunning so that is fired brick aged mahogany and then dusty concord at the end so let's now move on to our four color combination now this one again i'm going to start with dusty concord at the end so just lay that down then i'm going to go into seedless preserve so we're kind of getting a bit of a pinky color going on i have to say that these four colors are one of my favorite combinations now of course i can mix up which sort of shades of each color i use but blues purples and greens all together i absolutely adore so just creating that blend line through there by going over overlapping the two in small circles and using each brush now I'm going to need to come a bit more into this half with the seedless preserves to blend into the blue. So you notice how I've just faded that out for now. Reinstate the centre line, make sure that's nice and solid. Because I'm now going to be using blue, I'm going to remove, there we go, just remove the purple from the mat and come into faded jeans so this is a nice again it's sort of a dusky blue it works really well actually into dusty concord because it's again it's kind of got that gray tone to it it's not a bright vibrant blue lovely solid color there and I'm again come into your previous color with what's left on the brush and just go little circles over the blend line and then the, that, those circles can slowly get larger and larger until you've blend, blended that out. Look at that. So let's put a little bit more on there. Lovely. And then lastly, into our cracked pistachio, a really nice bright green. Now, with all of these combinations that I'm showing you, you don't have to do the full selection of colours. So if you like those colours together, I need to do a bit more work blending those actually. Um, I'll just do that while I'm talking to you. But if you like those three colours together, you can use those three. You don't have to go and put cracked pistachio into your project if you wish. That's a bit better. That's going actually into quite a dark purple, almost echoing. You see that line between the two, almost echoing the purple here. Um, but if you like those three colours, you can use those. If you like those two, you can use those or those two. So you can pick and choose which of these colours that I sit together for you that you use in your projects. You don't have to go ahead 
and use all of them. Now, cracked pistachio, a fantastic green, a mint green, very, very bright. It is a paler colour, so always a little bit harder to lay down the colour as quickly as we have with the previous ones. But I'm just going to fill that white space first, make sure that's completely covered. And then I'm going to start working into the blue just a little bit because it, the blue is quite a strong colour. So just start working that down. I don't think I need to do that any further, actually. I think that's probably enough. Let's just make sure I'm happy with all of that. Now I just sort of call it titivate. <laughs> I just play with mixing the two colours, making sure my blends are exactly where I want them. And don't forget, of course, again, I will say it again, if you've got... Um, if you've got bright lights like I have, sometimes when you look at your colour blends, you think, oh, they don't look at this. They don't quite look right. That's because there's damp patches and they're shining. If you take it away from the light, maybe take it out into natural daylight and you'll see those colour blends. And aren't they just beautiful? Now, just a little quick tip for you. So let's wipe this. What you're going to want for this tip is a stencil. So I've got my uh, Sunburst stencil from my In The Stars collection. And you're also going to want either a wet wipe or a wet damp cloth. Uh, I've just got a wet wipe here to hand, so I'm going to use, use this. Now I'm going to place my stencil over my ink blending and I'm going to start rubbing through the small gaps. Now, what you're looking for is actually just moisture to go through the gaps and sit there and start effectively lifting or brushing away the colour. So I've gone through with my dampness now, I'm going to go through with my clean one as well and pick that up. Now you're going to get damp also come through the stencil, unless of course you spray that down. But you've got a little bit of an effect there. Notice how the water goes underneath, so just be careful of that. But you've got an effect there that's really, really beautiful. So just started working on that there and then I'm going to place this back over and I'm going to enhance that even further there we go by going back over again you could always just do a little light spray of water so like so just be careful not to put too much on because again too much is where you start to get uh, it bleed through the stencil and again give that a rub and we've got a really fun effect there now that's of course using my in the textures in the stars uh, stencil but you could use absolutely any stencil you have to hand for a fun technique like i say if your ink is dry you could use repositionable spray glue or a stencil glue on the back to hold that down so you'll get more defined detail but i really like that blurred image I think if I didn't want the blurred image, I'd use texture paste or something like that through it. But I like that the water seeps through a bit and you get like this, yeah, this sort of blurry, hazy image there. So really good fun to do. But anyway, there is a dusty Concord for you. So that's two different colour combinations using that colour. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? Hopefully this has helped some of you and um, you'll go and find dusty Concord if it's not already in your stash, uh, purchase it. But of course, go and find it, dig it out and have a play with it. Um, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I hope to see you again very soon with another Distress Oxide colour combination video.